Shalom and welcome to Counting the Cost, a linguistic analysis of Hebrew numbers. Today we will cover the number seven and we will see that this is related to the idea of fullness. The word for seven in Hebrew is Sheva and it is considered to be a sacred number. Genesis 7-2 Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. So it's kind of interesting that even in this day before Torah was given to Moses and people learned in Leviticus uh, what was clean and what was unclean, Noah seems to have already known this. Zechariah 4.2 and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof. An obviously related word to seven, Sheva, is Shavua, which means a week, or a period of seven days or years. Genesis 29, 28, and Jacob did so and fulfilled her week, and he gave him Rachel, his daughter, to wife also. So as you remember, uh, Laban, Lavon, tricked Jacob and gave his elder daughter first when Jacob wanted to marry the younger daughter. And so basically they had a week-long time where they were um, alone as husband and wife. And then even though Jacob worked, another amount of time for Rachel, he received her as a wife after the first week that he spent with Leah. Ezekiel 45.21 In the first month and the fourteenth day of the month, he shall have the Passover, a feast of seven days. Literally, it says weeks of days. Unleavened bread shall be eaten. The plural of Shavua is Shavuot. It takes a feminine plural. And this is the plural of weeks. And we have a festival, which is called the Festival of Weeks, the Festival Shavuot. Exodus 34:22, And thou shalt observe the Feast of Weeks of the first fruits of the wheat harvest and the Feast of Ingathering at the year's end. It's talking about two separate festivals. The Feast of Weeks, which comes midsummer, Shavuot, which is the beginning of the wheat harvest. And then at the end of the agricultural year, the Feast of Ingathering is another name for tabernacles for Sukkot. Deuteronomy 16.10 And thou shalt keep the Feast of Weeks unto Yahweh thy God with the tribute of a freewill offering of thine hand, which thou shalt give unto Yahweh thy God according as Yahweh thy God hath blessed thee. In Daniel, when it talks about the 70 weeks, it uses a different plural for the weeks. I've written here in the Hebrew, if you can read it, Shavuim Shiv'im. So the Shiv'im, the second word, is the word Sheva, seven, and it's in a masculine plural, which makes it 70, and that's the common way of uh, making the, the, the tens. In other words, 20, 30, well not 20, but 30, 40, 50, they're all the masculine plural of the um, cardinal number. So that is Shivim, that's 70. And rather than Shavuot, which me is a normal meaning for weeks, the normal plural for weeks, it says Shavuim. Now it's not uncommon in Hebrew to have words which appear in both the masculine and feminine plural. For example, the word Gan, which means garden, we see both Ganim and Ganot. So in this verse, we're going to see that it's always Shavuim for weeks. Daniel 9.24 Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity 
and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the Most Holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks. Again, it's Shavuim and three score and two weeks. And the street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks, again, Shavuim, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. I just want to bring this up because there are people that are interpreting this prophecy as being 70 uh, occasions of the festival of Shavuot. And I think that if it were, speaking of the festival, then Daniel would probably have used the traditional name of the holiday, Shavuot. And so I really think that this refers to weeks uh, because it's a, it's a plural, it's an unusual plural, but it doesn't seem to be the name of the festival, which is Shavuot. The root Sheva, as used as a verb, also has a meaning of uh, to swear in the idea that oaths are sacred. Genesis 24, 9. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swear to him concerning that matter. The matter was that he would go and find a bride for Isaac, but he would not take Isaac out of the land. Psalm 89.35 Once have I sworn by my holiness that I would not lie unto David. Uh, there's a place in Israel called Be'er Sheva. It's the well of the promise or the well of the oath that uh, Abraham made a promise and an oath with Avimelech that that well would belong to Abraham's descendants. The noun that comes from this verb is Shavua. So the noun for week, the accent shifts. The noun for week is Shavua, and for oath or promise is Shavua. Second Samuel 21.7 But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of Yahweh's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. Jeremiah 11.5 that I may perform the oath which I have sworn unto your fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, as it is this day. Then answered I and said, So be it, O Yahweh. We're going to look at some cognate roots of Sheva. Cognate roots are roots that are related to each other by linguistic rules of sound shift. So we have... Um, the word sava with a sin instead of the shin. Sava, which is not the tsava, which is the host or the army, which is spelt with an aleph, but tsava with a hey. Shavach and also shava. Sava with a sin means to be satisfied or to be fulfilled. Deuteronomy 8.10 When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless Yahweh thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. If you sit down to dinner with some observant Jewish people, they actually say a blessing for the meal after they eat, and it's based on this uh, scripture. After you have eaten, you will bless Yahweh your God. Psalm 17.15 as for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I will be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Proverbs 30.15 There are three things that are never satisfied, yea, four things. Say not, it is enough. The grave and the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith not, it is enough. So we have this idea of satisfied or the idea of being filled. The cognate tzava, uh, tzadi bet he, means to swell or to fill up with water or some miscellaneous fluid. It's only ever used 
in this uh, Numbers 5 passage of the test for the adulterous woman. Numbers 5.21, Then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath. Uh, both to charge the woman and the oath are from the root Sheva. An oath of cursing, and the priest shall say unto the woman, Yahweh make thee a curse and an oath among thy people, when Yahweh doth make thy thigh to rot and thy belly to swell. There is a homonym for Tzava, which is spelled with an Aleph, which means the armies and the Lord of, of the hosts, when we're talking about the host of the army. But we're not going to cover that today. Shavach has to do with praise or soothing or calming. The idea is filling up the desire of God so that he is somehow appeased. Psalm 63.3 Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Psalm 89.9 Thou rulest the raging of the sea, when the waves thereof arrive, arise, thou stillest them. The root Shava Shin Bet He means to take captive. Genesis fourteen fourteen. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. Um, in case 318 seems like a strange number, a uh, miscellaneous number, you know there's nothing miscellaneous in the Bible. Actually, uh, what the rabbis say is that all he took was Eliezer, his servant, because the gematria for Eliezer's name is 318. Psalm 137.3 for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required us of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. Uh, it's interesting in that in the Hebrew it doesn't say required of us a song, but it says they asked for the words of the song, and then they said, Sing us uh, a song. And it's very true, I think, that people who are not inclined to believe or want to be devoted, they just say, well, you know, tell me what the words are, tell me what the laws are, I'll do that. But they don't want to sing the melody. They don't want to participate in actually doing uh, what is required by the Spirit. Um, it's one of those things that divide, that's divided in two. We have the Spirit and the truth. Maybe the words are the truth, but we also need to live by the Spirit. Anyway, that's just a little side thought. So what can we determine uh, about seven? There are so many things that are seven in the Bible. I don't believe that we could make a list of all of them, and I'm sure that you're familiar with many of them. But we want to connect this idea of the fullness and the promise. The fullness of time will bring the fulfillment of a promise. Galatians 4.4 4, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law. There was a promise all through the Tanakh that there would be a Messiah born to this specific group of people at the time. And when does it happen? At the fullness of time. Romans 11.12, Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. This is talking about the Jewish people, or those who can identify themselves as having uh, been brought up through a Hebraic line, and consciously knowing who they are. Paul says, they are the administrators of the covenant. They have carried the word for us through all time. And they have been cut off from the tree. Uh, but God is perfectly capable of reattaching them. And so what Paul is saying is, yes, you know, they were cut off so the Gentiles could be grafted in. And that's a great richness for the Gentiles. But 
when the Jewish people who are cut off are grafted back in, how great is the fullness? What is the fullness of that promise going to be? In Romans 11.25, For I would not, brethren, that ye be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Paul says, yes, all Israel will be saved. How is that going to happen? I don't know. But I do know that every single believer has a part in that. And when the fullness of the Gentiles happens, there is a promise that will be will come to fruition, and that promise is that all Israel will be saved. We need to always remember 2 Corinthians 1.20, For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. So we just want to be encouraged. Uh, anything that we see when we think about seven, that there is a fullness that's going to happen, and at that time of the fullness, there will be completion of a promise that will manifest through Yahweh's kingdom unto us. I'm sure there are many other things that you think about, you already know about seven that relate to these roots. In the meantime, keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Tasimitai nayim al hashamayim. Shalom, shalom. Bye, Ben Uziya, Mikdalim Birushalai, Bye, Haskem, Bye, Haskem, Bye, Ben Mikdalim, Bye, Ben Mikdalim.